welcome back to the last episode of season three of Yes, I'm Adopted. Don't make it weird. We're here. Yeah, we've we arrived, are. which is kind of fun. Three seasons in, uh, baby. Yeah, we did the first one totally counted. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> um, we're we've been doing this. This is our our twelfth week in this season, and uh, the channel and the the community continue to grow, and we've been incredibly gratified and really honestly humbled by how much support we've received from all of you, and uh, and really getting to hear a lot of your stories and being told like I mean some of you guys have shared your families with us yeah, and shared cool. uh, like just so many cool things with us and stories and and been uh, very vulnerable yeah. which is super cool um, and it's also kind of hard right so yeah. um, knowing that and knowing a lot of the stories that have come through these last few weeks we're gonna close out on kind of a, a high low note I suppose high low um, and what gonna, we do <laughs> we're gonna talk about um, a little bit about cognitive dissonance and how uh, expectation and reality are not always the same and what to do when things don't always work out. Yeah, we've, we've heard a lot of stories from people and, and some of them have been great and some of them not so much. I mean, if you guys are part of the group, you'll see people asking questions. Hey, I'm dealing with this as an adoptee or my kid's going through this. Uh, so we're going to hit on some of those first. But before we do that, before we do that, we have a special announcement to make. We do. You ready? You ready? Are you ready for it? <laughs> that seems so Special corny. announcement. <laughs> special announcement, Dave. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here we go. All right. One, two. <laughs> See, now it's weird. It's totally weird. Two, three. <laughs> ah, what? We have a thing. We got a shirt. Hang on. Let me take this off. Hang on. All right, Dave. I'll turn around. What? Yes, I'm adopted. Don't make it weird. We are going to be giving away some shirts here right at the end of this episode. So make sure you guys stick around to find out how to be entered and to win the first shirt that we have printed. Besides these ones. Besides these ones. This we're is gonna, mine. We're going to wear these. I've sweated in this already. You yeah, don't want this. It, that would make it weird. And if you do want it, it's real creepy. I think so. Please don't write that we you want it. We don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> you should put your vest on. You don't want to look like no. That. <laughs> we're wearing the You're same. You're wearing thing. a V-neck. <laughs> we're wearing the same shirt. I'm gonna continue on now. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the thing that we're actually here to right. talk about. So we have merch, which now, is our merch. It's coming along, <laughs> and we're gonna give some away at the end of this uh, this episode. So stay tuned to the end, or just skip to the end, and you can figure out how to. Don't work. skip to the end. Don't be that person. Cognitive dissonance. Dave will explain cognitive dissonance before we get into the rest of the content. Okay. Here. So there's a psychological concept called mm -hmm. cognitive dissonance um, that is essentially it's when what we expect and what we experience are not the same. Yep. And we have to reconcile that or bring that together. Uh, a lot of children experience this early on when we think about our parents and how they're not actually all knowing, right? right. Like as much as I like to, you know, we, we poke fun at our parents now, like there's, there's a part of that, uh, that is realizing that they're not all powerful and they're not, you know, they're not, <laughs> um, omnipotent and, coming to, to terms with that and realizing that. Now, uh, as an adoptee, there are so many of things in our lives that are paradoxical yep. that uh, we experience cognitive dissonance almost from day one. All the time. Right? And, and so there's so much stuff <laughs> that it's just like, well, what are we supposed to do now? How do we, oh. how do we reconcile that? But yep. also in a lot of, for instance, maturing theory and psychological maturation, one of the ideas is that reconciling cognitive dissonance is what leads people to maturity or fullness or wholeness or contentment yep. or whatever, whatever that is. And yep. so uh, in that regard, the adoptee that's able to reconcile that as it comes up is capable of experiencing and becoming mature much more quickly and much yes. more fluidly. Yes. So uh, that's a lot of what we've seen recently is that the expectations that people have either about adoption or about uh, their family experience or about uh, a lot of reunion stories, yes. for instance, coming through right now. That's a big one for um, people. A lot of what's expected is not what's experienced, and that creates cognitive dissonance, and, and it's honestly, it's a little rough to deal with. Yeah. So we're going to, I mean, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, and a lot of those times, you know, like people, they, they tend to shut down, sure. right? You know, they, they're not sure what to do in those moments, and so you don't do anything. You just decide to not do anything. 
uh, which is really rough. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of those stories that we hear out there. You know, a, a lot of the cool ones that we see coming into the page or the, the group even, um, people are going through stuff, crap happens, but I'm better because of it. Sure. Or I'm better now. Right. Uh, maybe not because of it, but because I've worked through it. Right. And so there's there's a lot of these um, overall tones, I guess, in, in adoption when it comes to cognitive dissonance that um, adoptees, we're, like we've talked about this before, we're resilient. Yeah. You know, we are resilient people. We, we go through a lot of crap, but we are able to handle what seems like a lot more emotional stress or emotional issues than non-adopted people. Sure. Because we've dealt with it from day one. Yeah. I think that's right. I think it kind of goes either way, right? Like it's, it's either it, it ruins you or you're made way better, right? Yeah. And so like the response that we see to a lot of this stuff, like it's either shut down or hype up, right? Yeah. Like those are the two things. Either I don't deal with it all or I deal too much Yeah. and um, <laughs> and try to get everybody involved. And that's a level of drama that we don't really participate oh, in either. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, <laughs> you know, but there's... There's definitely that level of this thing happened, what do I do? And the person that has dealt with their stuff, right, is capable of dealing with so much more. Yeah. And we've we've experienced that. Like I mean, you said, it. like adoptees, I think, that have mastered their their grief. Yeah. Uh, or mastered their trauma or at least come come to come face to face. Face with it and, and yeah, come out the other side of it are are some of the Dare I say, emotionally strongest people I know. Yeah. Uh, because we've seen that, right? Like, there's not a whole lot that can break. I mean, I cry at movies and stuff, but like, <laughs> you don't, you don't cry ever. Don't cry. Uh, but you know, there's there's not there's nothing that that debilitates me anymore when right. it comes to like the emotional stuff because we've been through so much. We've been through a lot. Yeah, and, and that's the same with a lot of adoptees out there. Um, you, you'll hear these stories of adoptees that just, you know, we, we've talked about uh, the statistic a little bit. You know, like 50% of adoptees are incarcerated at some point. Right. Isn't that <laughs> terrible? It's rough. <laughs> like, holy cow, that's a hard one. But you, you look at the trauma that they've gone through. You look at the PTSD that they've developed because of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and just all these issues that they deal with. It's no wonder. It's right. no wonder that these statistics are so high because nobody has really taught us how to work through these issues. Sure. And in general, like, I mean, just, that's just kind of America, right? Yeah. Like, the, there's so much about about being an adult today that just isn't ever given to it's us. Never. No. Right? It wasn't taught or, like, our parents may have done a good job, but it was never, like, an intentional, this is what it means to be a man. This is right. What, this is what it means to be a woman or this is what it means to be an adult. Right. Here you go. Um, so much of that is just gleaned ourselves, and so we we have probably missed some stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and and that's just I mean that's just all of us. But then you've put you put adoption, grief, or trauma on top of that, and <laughs> what you get is just I mean it's a mess. It's a nightmare unless you're willing to sort through <laughs> it. Now, I want to address this I think also to parents, which is this is the hardest part about being a parent to yeah. me is realizing that my kids have to go through crap. Yeah. Um, it's hard. Be, right? Because we want to protect our kids. Yeah. So much. Like, I, I don't want my kids to have to experience uh, any, of, really, of the, the hard stuff that I've experienced. But right. that's also what's made me who I am. Yeah. Right? And so there's a lot of that that we have to, lo- I mean, you have to let your kids work through. There's so much you don't control about being a parent that makes it really difficult to be a parent. Yeah. Right? But you, you as the adult have to be willing to let, let some stuff happen yeah. also, I think, for sure. your kids. And that's, I mean, that's really rough, too, for the adoptive parents out there. But that's some of the best advice I think I was ever given yeah. was that sometimes your kid is going to hurt, and the best you can do is just be there. Yep. But you can't stop it. No. You know? There's, there's a lot of adoptive parents, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not calling anybody out here, um, but there's a lot of adoptive parents out there that feel like they need to fix their kid. Mm-hmm. They want to fix their kid. And and they're coming at it from the best intentions. Sure. Right? It's because they don't want them to experience that pain. They don't want them to have to go through all of the emotional trauma that they have to deal with as an adoptee. And so the parents from an early on, they want to fix their kid so they never have to go through that. 
Um, that's wrong, though. It doesn't. It doesn't work that <laughs> it, way. It doesn't. <laughs> like, it, and it's not a concept. Like you know, as as far as like I know of like birth kids. Sure. You, you don't you know try to fix every problem, or at, at least it's not as pronounced. Um, you know, with birth children, you know, you're not trying to make sure that they're perfectly healthy from day one or anything because they've been suffered this whole big thing. It, it's not the same. Right. And and for a long time, again, the the studies were not finished yet. Hmm. It was being done during this time, but the the studies were not finished. And we have access to all of this great literature and all of these great podcasts and videos and teachers that are out there that are now talking about it. Um, and they don't say it's your job to fix your kid. Right. For, yeah. for the adoptee out there that is dealing with all this stuff, what kind of advice would you give them as far as like what they could be learning now, maybe learning about themselves sure. uh, and so they don't have to go through this complete shift. It's like this slow, gradual instead of Lord, here, I here. <laughs> I don't know. It's rough. It all came up for me very quickly, I think. Right? It did, like, yeah. There's so much stuff that happened right away that it's just like, whoa, right. okay, what, what now? And lean in, you know? Uh, but, lean in. I think that's a good one. Yeah, I think, you, I mean, we have to lean into it. Yeah. And experience it. Yeah. Which is... The fullness of it. Yeah. Not just part of it. I mean, last week we talked about hypervigilance, and I've seen some posts on the on the forums about this as well, where, yeah. uh, I mean, that's where a lot of, like, addictive behaviors come in, because yeah. my brain is so active, and I'm constantly thinking about things, and in order to just turn it off, numb people it. will turn to drugs or alcohol and stuff like that. Yep. Um, uh Whereas I think what we've learned to do is to lean into it and just like my outside of this, most of our lives are centered around really reconciliation of what's going on in our brains. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Which I'm just realizing now as I say. It. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. That's very true, though. <laughs> but I mean, we sit, we we think about stuff, right? Like, we do. And we write it down, and we whiteboard, and we have these discussions, and we, we produce this show, and we talk about it with all of you. And, yeah. and we do all of that, and that's how we've learned to cope with just the overwhelming number of thoughts that go through our brains. Yeah. Uh, and because otherwise it would be too much. Like, I'm not involved in a ton of, like, other activities. Like, I'm involved in as few activities as I can possibly right. manage. Like, I've taken on a couple of teaching spots and some other speaking gigs and whatever, but, like, it's almost too much <laughs> just to have the, like, three things I do a week, you know, because this is what I do. And I've kind of learned to center my life around uh, thinking about these things and leaning into them. Yeah. Like, take the time, like, and, and we've said this multiple times, we'll continue saying this. Take the time to actually sit and think. That's what it is. Take the time to process, to start asking yourself these questions, um, and to start trying to figure out, I, I guess, start with identity. That seems to be a big one for a lot of people. Who are you? Ask yourself that question. Who am I? You're going to have this existential crisis probably. Right. Like, I don't know who I am. <laughs> you I haven't just, had uh, it already. <laughs> it's coming. Buckle up. It's a fun one. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, but because of the things that we've faced head on, and again, in its entirety, right. not, just, not just little bits and pieces. And you can start out with little bits and pieces. That's fine. Like incremental improvements and all. But you need to go through things in its entirety because otherwise it's going to have this chance of rearing its ugly head one day and you're not going to know how to deal with it. Um, I had that happen to me the other day yep. where, you know, like I'm dealing with some stuff and I, I caught myself like kind of being this victim type of thing to my own circumstance. Mm. My wife and I were talking and I thought she was coming after me on a personal level. Right. She wasn't. Right. How many times have you had she that wasn't. conversation, adoptees? <laughs> and and <Lord. laughs> it would usually take me a lot longer in order to reconcile, in order to go through the steps, in order to figure out, oh, she wasn't attacking me. Right. Uh, but I was able to get through it fairly quickly. And then I apologized profusely. Right. Because <laughs> that's where we're at now. Yeah. You know, what used to take me a week takes a couple hours. Yeah. But it's still there. It took so much time, though, <laughs> to get there. Right. And that's, I guess, the thing. Start now. Don't wait till later. Start now. Um, and it could just be taking 15 minutes 
Just think. Yeah. Just sit and think before you do something. And be honest about it. Yeah. And also know that your brain is capable of change. Like, you're in control here. You yes. get to decide. Your mind makes brain, right? So, like, you get to decide. Your thought life changes how you operate and changes the physical structure of, of your brain yep. meats. Yep. So, uh, you, get to, you get to decide how that's going to be. And if you're honest about who you are and you're honest about who you want to be and the steps that are involved in, in between, you can get there. Yep. Which is not an instant fix. It's not quick, but it's definitely worth doing. Um, a lot of people have had great experience finding uh, adoption competent therapists, yeah. um, which I think is excellent. Yeah, do uh, it. You know, uh, and honestly, having having people that you trust in your life that you can share the experience with, um, which is really hard because I only trust like four people, right? Right. But to have those people and and be able to work it through with them is is uh, tremendously beneficial. Yeah. Um, I don't think we'd be the same people if it weren't for one another. Right. I don't think you'd be the same people without our spouses. And, oh, and, for sure. You know, without <laughs> uh, uh, really working through this with good friends. So, yeah, um, yeah sometimes things don't don't work out. Uh, a lot of the stories that, that we've experienced and a lot of the stories that you've shared with us are hard yeah. and heart-wrenching and difficult, and they're not probably going to get better. But you can get better. Uh, you yeah. can you can be better than you are now. Yeah. Uh, and all of that is very possible. Yeah. So go be better people. But, uh, there's a lot of good books out there. I mean, yeah, well, we have two weeks <laughs> off. Become better people in those two weeks <laughs> off. <laughs> Let us know how that yeah. went. We're not abandoning you. Yeah. We're just going to be off for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram. Yeah. So, so. let's talk about the shirts, Davo. We got real heavy for a while, so let's talk Indeed. about something happy, like shirt giveaways. Okay. Hooray. <laughs> we're gonna, shirt giveaway. We're going to give away two shirts. Yeah. So we're going to do it on both platforms. We're going to be doing it on Instagram and Facebook. If you are watching on YouTube, get one of those two. <laughs> Go follow us on Instagram. Go follow us on Instagram or Facebook. There are a lot of people that are like, I hate Facebook. Go to Instagram, only follow us and nobody else. I'm okay with that. <laughs> so we are going to give away these shirts. Again, not these ones, but ones very similar to this. Um, on Instagram, we're going to have a post up there. And what we want you to do is comment with your favorite emoji that you think best represents adoption. It's going to get weird. Oh my gosh, I can't even it's going to get weird. <laughs> I don't even follow our Instagram, but I'm about to now. Yeah, if just you, to, just if to you see put that. up the poop emoji, then I don't think I'm going to poop it. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. Maybe don't maybe don't use that yeah. one. Yeah. Also on our Facebook, on this video, to be entered to win uh, one of the shirts on this video, leave any comments down below that is, that just doesn't say, I don't want to be entered into the Yeah, the we had some drawing. people do that before. Uh, with the for, look. Right for bonus points that don't really mean anything, throw a gift down there Ooh. of uh, of the gift that you feel best, best represents. represents adoption. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get spammed oh, so that's hard. It's gonna be rough. This is gonna get bad. Anyway, I can and, see uh, <laughs> Andy right now just like researching. I, we gifts. know what you're doing. You're gonna. Oh, Andy, okay. we know you're researching. You only get one right entry, so if you put other <laughs> gifts down there. Thank you, but you only get entered yeah. once so, into the drawing, and we're gonna do that on a uh, weekend update here while we're off. While we're off. Yeah. Think. Yep. So again, we are gonna be off for two weeks, but we'll be around on Instagram. We will be doing quick little updates here and there for you guys to make sure you just see proof of life. We still exist. <laughs> we're still here. Just Sometimes because I we, wonder. Yeah, just because we haven't been in front of your faces for you know two weeks doesn't mean we cease to exist. <laughs> So that's it. <laughs> Other adoptees. Yes. <laughs> you guys know. <laughs> so. We're, we're still permanent. For our last <laughs> outro of season three. Hit them, Davo. Like, we're, comment, share, and subscribe. <laughs> we'll see you in two weeks. You didn't hit them, Davo. Oh, mm. <laughs> <laughs>